Congaree National Park is located in South Carolina and is one of the least visited national parks in the country. I found a lot to like here with the floodwaters nourishing the shadowy landscape and with the hardwood forest towering above as I walked and kayaked the trails. I'm trying to visit all the national parks and here's how I spent one day in Congaree National Park. Let me know what you think if you've been in the comments. I spent the previous night in the city of Columbia and then drove the 30 minutes in to meet up with Carolina Outdoor Adventures to go kayaking on Cedar Creek. I have no affiliation with them, I just found them online, but I did really like my tour and I found the owner to be an awesome person to go kayaking with. So the park is actually pretty flooded right now, which is good for kayaking, but is not good for the rest of my day here. <laughs> Something I didn't know before I went is that the park actually floods a few times a year. It severely limits the hiking trails you're able to do in the park, but it makes for amazing photography with the high water levels and it's great for kayaking. After everyone who was on the tour arrived, they helped us into the kayaks and set us out on Cedar Creek. We ended up having a lot of people on our tour, but there were multiple guides so it was easy to kind of take your time and to ask any questions that you had. This is legitimately a half day adventure and we left at 9.30 and didn't get back to around 12.45. Along the way, the guide stopped many times to talk about different natural features in the park, and we were able to kayak into a lot of the groves because the water level was so high. I absolutely loved this experience as the water meanders slowly as you're making your way down the river. Basically the entire way down you could just sit there and relax, paddling every once in a while to get out of the way of hanging branches and just taking in the surroundings. You could hear the slow lapping of the water and birds chirping out in the distance and it was pretty much the perfect way to spend a morning. Do note that on the way back you will get a workout as you're going upstream and you have to paddle a lot more. I hope it comes through in the video but this area felt unlike anything I had seen before. It almost felt primeval in the way that the trees came out of the water and the perfect reflections. Coming from California with redwood trees, it was also impressive to see how big some of these trees got in this part of the national park. At one point the guide pulled me over to show me two different spiders you can see in the park, a wolf spider and a fishing spider. She said that she never really sees them next to each other like this, so it was a huge highlight. As we were heading down, we also saw a cottonmouth snake, but more on that later. Eventually we reached our turnaround point, but before turning around, we entered an old growth forest that's normally not accessible due to the water level. And we were given 20 minutes to just kayak around and take in all of the different sites. This was easily my favorite part of the kayaking trip as I love just going at my own pace and taking in all of the views but I ended up spending most of my time with a small baby turtle that we found on one of the logs. On the way back, we paddled a lot faster to make up for lost time, but we saw many different things, including fishing spiders and multiple snakes. Here's the best shot I could get of the cottonmouth on the way back. I was using my long zoom lens for this one as I didn't want to get anywhere close to it. About five minutes later, we saw a second cottonmouth on one of the branches next to the water. We continued to see more reptiles on the way back with a lizard they called a skink, and I believe this water snake was called a brown snake. I have to admit, I was pretty excited to be able to see all of these different spiders and snakes while we were kayaking. It's certainly a unique wildlife experience to have in a national park like this. What an absolutely incredible experience that was. If you come to the park, you have to do it. Now we're heading on to the visitor center to do some trails. I guess I was already here, but I hadn't seen the sign. We made it to Congaree National Park, my 46th national park. Let's go check it out. Like I said earlier, this is a tiny national park and this is basically the only established area. There are some trails you can do on the outskirts of the park, but most of the main trails leave from this visitor center. Here's the famous mosquito meter. Luckily for me, it's on two today. I didn't see a single mosquito when I was here and I can't imagine being here on a day when the mosquito meter says six. The visitor center here is small, but it had some nice exhibits, including one on the preservation of the park and another on the different animals you can see there. Of course, you can get your passport stamp here and talk to the rangers, so you should definitely pop in before heading out on the trail. 
I had thought that I was going to be able to do a lot more hiking, but when I walked out to see the trail sign, it showed that all of them were flooded. So after spending the morning kayaking, we explored the visitor center. Now we're going out on the boardwalk trail, but unfortunately, a lot of it is actually flooded right now as the park floods all the time throughout the year. It can make it difficult to go on a lot of the trails. We're going to do as much as we can today, though. The two and a half mile boardwalk loop trail is by far the most popular trail in the national park. Because it's so accessible for many visitors, this is actually the only thing they do when they visit Congaree. What's cool about this trail is that it's a Sunday in the springtime and it's relatively silent out here. You don't pass too many people, you can hear the birds. It's really peaceful and serene almost. According to the Congaree website, this national park protects the largest old growth bottomland hardwood forest in North America. I was actually pretty surprised to see how big some of the trees had grown around the boardwalk and it was definitely an early highlight on the trail. Be sure to pick up one of these boardwalk maps so you can see the different things you're looking at. I'm actually going backwards because that other part is flooded, but it's still cool to see. One of the things I learned about was that Harry Hampton, which the visitor center is named after, a reporter for a local newspaper, and he is the one who is responsible for helping to save the floodplain here in the 1950s. It was eventually turned into the Congaree Swamp National Monument in 1976 and then a national park in 2003. This Sims Trail is an offshoot from the Boardwalk Trail and it follows an old road that used to go through the park. Right after we passed the crossroads, we ran into a black snake that I was told was called a black racer. I know a lot of people don't like snakes, but I was pretty excited to see them here. So most people walk the Boardwalk Trail relatively quickly, but I recommend whenever you see water looking down just for a second to see what you can see. I've seen snakes and turtles already. It definitely adds a lot to this trail. Check it out, there's a little turtle right there. As I was walking, I was lucky to be able to catch a turtle that was swimming below me. And I would say this is one of those parks where you definitely need to take your time and just look out to see what you can see. There's some type of lizard right down there too. We're still on the elevated part of the trail, but we're getting around to where it lowers and you can see how easy it would be to flood as the water is just moving through here incredibly slow and kind of just sits. This part of the trail was one of my favorites as it looked over a dense grove and the reflections were incredible. You can see how high up the trail is here and it doesn't generally flood, but every once in a while the water will get high enough to flood here. Right at marker 15, look out and you can actually see an iron box that was used as a still to make alcohol during the Prohibition era. I have to say, I'm really loving this trail. It's stunning, especially with the water reflecting the trees, all the birds and small little things of wildlife you can see around here. This is, this is pretty epic. I mean, I can honestly say I've never seen anything like this before in my life. As we left the elevated portion of the boardwalk, we arrived in the back corner of the trail, which gave us a viewpoint over Weston Lake. At one point in time, Weston Lake was actually an oxbow of the Congaree River. Over centuries though, the river has moved and left this lake behind, but it's slowly filling in. During the summer, this is a great place to see turtles, so be sure to keep your eye out. This is the trail I was planning on doing, Weston Lake Loop, but as you can see, we're not doing that today. As you leave Weston Lake, it's about a half mile over to the beginning of the lower boardwalk. Right up ahead is where the trail is flooded, but I want to see the whole boardwalk trail if I can. I've talked to a bunch of people who have already walked through it, taken their shoes off. So it's about two tenths of a mile in the water. I think I'm just going to do that. Hopefully there's no snakes. <laughs> Prior to making it to the low boardwalk, you'll actually pass a slough, which they call a gut here. This is basically just a low channel where the water is able to flow through and continue along the floodplain. Most of the water we had seen so far was stagnant, so it was interesting to see it flowing just a little bit here. I like that this trail has an elevated boardwalk and a lower boardwalk. It's cool to be down close to the trees. When I was reading about this park, I heard how it was the worst national park in the United States and all of those things. I can say that is 100% not true. This is incredibly beautiful, the part that I've seen. And unless it doesn't normally look like this, I really like it. I did talk to a ranger and they did say that it doesn't normally look like this. This was because of the flooding. 
If you've been, let me know what it normally looks like in the comments. I was just told by the people I passed to not put my shoes on for a while because uh, there's a lot of water. All right, well, here it goes, walking a submerged boardwalk trail all the way down there. I just started and I'm about calf deep. I feel like I'm about to go swimming. <laughs> Look at how cool those pictures are. That is incredible with the reflection. I can't even tell you how long I spent in this quarter mile section as the water was cool and the views were just otherworldly. We're almost knee deep here. Let's see if it's gonna get the shorts or not. I just talked to somebody who said that they do this trail all the time and that when it's not this season, it's actually completely dry here. So I have to say, I'm pretty excited that it's flooded because it is, it is so pretty. There's a little fish right there wondering why everybody's on his boardwalk. <laughs> You can barely make out the trail through that section. <laughs> All right, we have ended the flooded section. I'm not gonna lie, that was awesome. It was so pretty and there was basically no one out there with me just getting to see these reflections and the lack of a trail. Definitely something I'll never forget. From here it was only a quarter mile back to the visitor center, but I took my time just trying to see if I could find any other wildlife and just enjoying the beautiful reflections and the cool spring day. We made it back to the start of the trail. Unfortunately, everything else in the park is currently flooded, so that's all we're gonna get to see on this video. I don't know, to me, this park feels a lot more like the Everglades where you kind of have to dig in a little bit, get to know it a little bit more to see its true beauty and potential come through. I love this park. I know not everyone does, but let me know what you think in the comments, and I'm sure I'll be back in the future to explore more of the trails in this park. We'll see you on the next one.